Good morning, guys. I want to talk to you today about one of my generators. This is my Black Max 3600 running watts, 450 starting watts. What that means is that while it's running, it can have a maximum startup of 4500 watts. So if my refrigerator starts up when the compressor kicks in, its initial jolt is 4,000 watts. I pretty much don't want to have anything but a few light bulbs on it because I'm already using other wattages. So that's what starting watts versus running watts means. It'll consistently run 3,600 watts, but when something kicks on, like a refrigerator, if it puts it over the 4,500, it's probably going to kick it off, kick your circuit breaker. So, I've had this generator now for six years, five years, somewhere along in there. And when we first moved into this house, we constantly had issues with the power going out, which is the only reason I bought this thing. Because I'd get tired of coming home from work and not having any electricity. So, break out the stove and start cooking outside. Um, wake up the next morning still didn't have power or maybe just got power back so I bought this you know the power has yet to go out with the exception of a couple of thunderstorms and even then it didn't go out very long oh funny story real quick um, when I was confined to my chair my easy chair back several months ago when I couldn't walk at all um, power went out well, my easy chair is electric because <laughs> my wife wanted me to have the absolute best and believe me i've got the absolute best me my wife i could not have a better wife anyways so i'm sitting here in my chair going if i have to go to the bathroom i can't get up and get in my wheelchair i'm stuck my wife was asleep i wasn't about to wake her up because it was like 4 30 in the morning so <laughs> i was just stuck there till the power came back on just kind of funny. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. Anyways, back to the video. Okay, so what you'll see here is you've got an on and off switch, and you've got a fuel switch, and you've got your choke. Your choke is right here. You need to understand. So what I like to do when I'm shutting it down, I'll turn my fuel off and just let it run. What that does, that gets every, uh, or as much fuel as you can possibly get out of the carburetor bowl so you're not having it turn into shellac in there. I don't like to leave much fuel in these, so I never put that much in it. But about every two to three months, you need to break these things out and let them run for a half hour or so. You don't necessarily have to go crazy, but you do need to put some sort of a draw on it. So what I typically do, since my laundry room is right behind me, I typically would just run electric cord into my washing machine and let that do it. That puts pretty good strain on it. Um, Forgive the dog, he thinks he deserves the attention. So you come down here, I've got four 120 volts, circuit breaker, circuit breaker, and then I've got a big 30 amp. Now if you're gonna use something like this for camping, you might wanna get something that has a 50 amp, or so I'm told, but when I purchased this, I got such a good deal on it. These things were regularly like $700, nothing, I got it for like 300. Um, so, I was really happy with it. I got this one actually at uh, Sam's. So yes, it would have been 2015 when I bought this. 2015, 2016. Yeah, it had been 2016. So it's five years. I do have a Predator um, 2200 inverter generator, which I really like. Uh, it's kind of heavy. I think it's like 40 pounds. I carry it around. Believe it or not, I can actually carry that now. I use it as well, and I will typically use it because it's so quiet when I'm out here grilling in the middle of the night, so I can have some lights. A lot of times that's when I'll run my lanterns too, because you want to make sure you keep your lanterns oiled up and keep it, make sure they run. That's always a good time to do it. So back down to maintenance, you need to change the oil in this at least once a year. It's a real bad spot for draining, but there's your drain plug. And there's where you fill it. So you gotta have a small filler filter. A small uh, you can think what they're called, a funnel. To put oil back in it. Don't ask me. 
how much the thing weighs because I couldn't tell you. All I can say is it's heavy. It does come with the wheels. Here's your muffler. This thing's actually quite, very quiet. It runs around 80 decibels, so it's really quiet. That is a um, type of a muffler you would find on a car. So you might have to put a bigger muffler on it, quiet it down a little bit more. Quick, go around the rest of it. Uh, the type of motor that it has. I want to say it is a Briggs. No, it is. It's a Black Max motor. So one thing it does caution you with this particular model. It says that you need to ground it. So if you've got a... Uh, Something like this over here. A water spigot. And a jumper cable. Attach it to. There's a ground right there. There's a ground right there. Any bare metal on it. Run it over to any uh, type of source that's uh, good for a ground. Water cable is a great ground. If you actually have it around your uh, electric meter, your electric meter is going to have a ground. That's going to be a multi-neutral. Can, you can connect anything you want to those. Um, if you have the knowledge and the strength, all right, now I don't, but if you have the knowledge and the strength, you could drive your own ground five to six feet in the ground anytime you want. But you need to make absolutely sure you know where everything is that's buried on your property. So make sure you call the guys, come out and mark it. Last time I checked, there's no charge to do that. Because they'd rather <laughs> you not hit a gas main or something like that. Fortunately, in my area, there's nothing underground in my backyard. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. Everything comes in the front yard. So many years working in the uh, communications industry. And dealing with outside plant like that, I'm pretty good judge. But before I would actually start driving something, I would most certainly call and have it done. But yeah, there's nothing out back here. So anyways, that's the purpose of the video for this. Oh, before I forget, I did just order myself an Echo Flow, an Eco Flow Delta. Um, I'm going to do a video on it when I get it. I bought that and two 120 watt uh, solar panels to go with it. So that's going to give me 240 watts of charging. My goal with that one right off the bat is to plug it into the house, charge it up. Excuse me just one second. I got to do my, my duty. This is my job. There you go. Now you guys see what he wants. That's how why he pesters me every time. So I bought this to keep the television and internet going in case there's a power outage or they start doing the uh, blackouts. I don't see that happening in my area because we're getting rain just like normal. You can see my grass is green and this is late July. It's usually brown by now, but we're getting enough rain to keep it going. So. Anyways, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna charge it up from the house. See how well it works there. Plug it into my TV and run just my TV and my internet off of it and see how long it takes it to die. Once it's died down, um, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna plug it in with the solar. We have good sun in this area, so I'm gonna see what the solar will do, how long it's gonna to take to charge it on the solar. And then I'll give you a review on it. But that particular model is going to be there just for my television. I'm going to use it as a battery backup. So I can keep my TV going just in case. And my internet. Just in case something goes wrong and we lose power. This way I'm not going to lose the ability to stay informed on my local TV. My local stations. So anyways, you guys have a great rest of your day. If you like this video, please share it. Give it a thumbs up. And remember, you can always ask me questions if you have any at, at xcooperx at protonmail.com. Thanks again.